All good. Good afternoon, everyone. I want to welcome you to our uh, regular uh, council meeting uh, for Wednesday, April 26th, um, public meeting. Um, just before I call the meeting to order, I want to bring your attention to uh, we have someone with us here here today who's going to be working with us on an OJT for the next while, Kimberly McCormick Casey. Welcome, Kimberly. Uh, she's working with uh, Shelly and Amanda. So I'm sure she'll learn lots. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, welcome, Kimberly. It's great to see you. Thank you. Maybe. Call the meeting to order. Uh, we acknowledge we're in Mi'kmaq, the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. Uh, shall we just call the roll, please? Thank you, Your Worship. Mayor Scott. Present. Deputy Mayor Joseph. Present. Councillor Gould. Present. Councillor Gilroy. Present. Uh, Councillor Hotelling has sent her regrets. Councillor Redmond. Present. Councillor McCormick, Present. Councillor Porter, Present. and Councillor Goodwin. Present. Thank you, Shelby. Um, Two point one approval of the agenda. So the agenda has been uh, uh, shared. I'd ask for a motion to approve the agenda as, pre as presented, please, Moved by Councillor Gould, second by Councillor McCormick. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Contrary, mind it nay. Motion is carried. Uh, Two point two approval of the minutes. So the minutes of the March 29th, twenty ninth, twenty twenty three regular meeting were, were, had been shared, and uh, if you had an opportunity to review those, I'd ask for a motion to approve them as presented, please. Moved by Councilor Redmond, seconded by Deputy Mayor Joseph. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Dr. Minot, nay. Motion is carried. 2.3, business arising. Mr. Herrick, I believe you're going to speak to this. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, business arising from the minutes is at page uh, 14, 15, 16, and 17 of the uh, Council Information Packet, and as usual, we have it organized into business from the most uh, recent meeting and then um, business uh, still outstanding from, from previous meetings. So at page 14, uh, it's the business arising from March 29th, 2023 meeting of council. Um, the vesture real uh, surplus prop property policy uh, has been completed. Uh, the Our participation in the spring uh, 2023 debenture is, is in progress, a matter of um, filing documents back and forth with the Department of Finance, uh, adjourned minimum tax sale, uh, that is in progress. There was an item uh, regarding uh, authorization of uh, certain staff members to be able to uh, correspond with CRA, and that's been completed. Uh, title search and sale of surplus property at 242 McGee Street in Spring Hill, and that's ongoing. Uh, the, dis the dissolution of the CGS May as well is, uh, is ongoing. We do expect that to be uh, completed uh, before summer, my tax youth engagement uh, proposal uh, is uh, completed, and uh, our participation, or at least the notification, our participation is complete. Um, likewise, a uh, participation in a uh, some receiving funds from the Christie Smith uh, Foundation and dispersing them to the Pugwash Farmers work Market. The um, folks who are involved have been notified in writing. Our volunteer recognition. Um, function and notification is completed. We had a wonderful evening um, uh, just uh, last week uh, in the uh, CIBC room in Spring Hill and committee selections are complete. I'll stop there and ask if there's any questions before I move on to the other pages. Any questions regarding the chair's report? Seeing none. Okay, I'll we'll move on to page 16, which is the ongoing action list. Um, some of these are complete, most are uh, in progress. Uh, Demolition of 1717 Highway 242 in River Hibbert. Contract has been awarded. Uh, I know that um, uh, up, to, up until the last few days, that the fact that the roads have been closed have, has been a limiting factor. And Al advises me, sorry, Mr. Cole advises me that the, that has changed. And so um, we're, we're hoping to, to see some action on some of those files. Lamp Cabin Park project. And I know that the Director of Wacrass has been working on that, and that's in progress. Uh, the um, technical overhaul of, of this room is in progress, and we certainly uh, know that there are still some things to be worked out, including the, the screen behind us that doesn't work and is being replaced under warranty. A few uh, other uh, tweaks, and so that's ongoing. The highway signage bylaw that's been around for a long time. I know that um, I know that our new director of development and planning. Um, uh, Glenn Boone has been in contact with Municipal Affairs, so hopefully we'll see something on that soon. Uh, the offer of uh, 22 Drummond Street and 12 Clark Street is uh, ongoing. I guess we've received the property uh, search, and, and so we, we continue to work through that. 
Uh, the issue of ice rental fees for the Cumberland County Minor Hockey Association, the Cumberland Blues and the Spring Hill Coal Miners for the 2023-24 uh, season, we have uh, that is ongoing. We have had one uh, in-camera conversation about that, given that those are uh, contractual arrangements are certainly uh, well within uh, the uh, legislation to be able to do that. And so those work forward. Um, the agreement with respect to the possibility of a utility scale solar PV project uh, is ongoing. The applications have been submitted um, and we simply await and the, the agreement has been signed with area. We simply await word on whether the grant itself, the program will be approved. We understand that it's significantly subscribed and a lot of folks interested. So we're not sure about our chances, but we're hopeful. Solid waste tender has been awarded. Contract isn't signed yet. We're working through that. Cumberland Business Connector. Uh, we're in discussions with the town of Amherst on the signature, placing signatures on that agreement. And uh, 92 Junction Road. Um, council's direction was to complete an analysis of 92 Junction Road, provide a report for options and council consideration. And that part has been completed, but now we work forward on some of those options. So, Your Worship, happy to try to answer any questions that folks may have. Thank you. Any questions from Mr. Harrett regarding his report? Good, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Herrick. Uh, we do not have any public hearings nor strategic priority issues or ma major organizational items today. Number five, organizational policy and bylaw items. 5.1, bylaw to amend the noise bylaw. And Mr. Cole, Director of Protective Services, please go speak to us. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, this is uh, a, uh, a motion to uh, approve first reading of the uh, bylaw to amend the noise bylaw and hold a second reading on May 24th, 2023 uh, council session. <clears throat> by way of background, uh, the municipality has received complaints regarding noise caused by snow removal equipment operating before 6 a.m. The current bylaw states uh, in part that, <clears throat> excuse me, notwithstanding any other provisions of this bylaw, this bylaw shall not apply to or prohibit not noise caused by the municipality. And I'll skip to the uh, pertinent uh, section. Um, by employees when acting in the reasonable execution of their duties between 6 a.m. and 11 p.m. in the day. Uh, there are times when residents need uh, to be uh, services to residents need to be provided uh, during nighttime hours or in the early hours of the morning. For instance, snow removal will normally commence well before 6 a.m. so that roads and sidewalks are safe for travel uh, for residents going to work or school. Uh, the repair of water mains, electrical or telecommunications infrastructure can also be required to be conducted outside of normal business hours. Other municipalities have uh, similar uh, noise bylaws. Um, on page 19 of the council package are three examples from uh, of other noise bylaws. Uh, all of them have extremely uh, similar language and very similar language to our own. And uh, each of those uh, bylaws uh, excuses uh, noise caused by employees of the town or municipality as the case may be uh, when acting in the reasonable execution of their duties. Um, I've uh, underlined uh, those words for emphasis in each of the three examples. Um, <clears throat> the uh, proposal uh, is to amend our bylaw uh, to uh, reflect that same wording so that uh, the amended bylaw would read uh, section six, notwithstanding any other provision of this bylaw, this bylaw shall not apply to or prohibit subsection three noise caused by the municipality, the government of Canada, the province of Nova Scotia, Nova Scotia Power Incorporated, and telecommunication companies and their contractors and employees when acting in the reasonable execution of their duties. So essentially, uh, Your Worship, what we're doing is um, deleting the uh, time constraint in the existing bylaw. 
Thank you. So the recommended <clears> motion <throat> is that council approve first reading of the bylaw to amend the noise bylaw and hold the second reading at the May 24th, 2023 council session. Somebody like make that motion, please. Moved by Councilor Porter, second by Councilor McCormick. Any questions or comments for Mr. Cole? Seeing none to call for question. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Carter mine at nay. Motion is carried. Thank you, sir. I point to amendment to the fire department registration policy, Mr. Cole. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, this is a uh, motion, uh, recommended motion that council approve the recommended amendments to the fire department registration policy, uh, which is uh, FS07-02. By way of background, it's section 294 of the Municipal Government Act that provides the framework for registration of fire departments. Um, under that uh, act, uh, under that section of the act, a municipality may not refuse to register a fire department that meets the criteria set out in the act. In other words, uh, Your Worship, there is no discretion on the part of, uh, or of, the, of the ability to register a fire department that meets the criteria. Um, since there's no discretion, the registration of the fire departments is really an administrative matter, and the ability of a fire department that is denied registration to apply to council to review that decision is, in the view of staff, the proper exercise of council's authority. Uh, the changes that are uh, recommended are, in summary, uh, and this is on page 21 of the council uh, brief, uh, you work with, uh, to substitute uh, Fire Services Coordinator, uh, which is a position that no longer exists within the municipality, with uh, Director of Protective Services in Sections 7, 8, 9, and 10, uh, to substitute Municipal Council with CAO in Section 8, and to delete the words by motion in that section, and uh, to add Section 8A to provide for a review by Council of the decision to register a fire department and substitute the registration form in the policy with the registration form attached. Uh, the uh, details of those uh, changes uh, are uh, set out uh, beginning at page 22. Uh, the uh, first uh, unhighlighted uh, section is the old section of the policy, Your Worship. And I've highlighted uh, fire services coordinator in section seven that's now would uh, be now replaced with Director of Protective Services. Uh, in Section 8, uh, Fire Services Coordinator is again uh, replaced with Director of Protective Services. And in the second line, uh, Municipal Council is uh, replaced with CAO. And uh, on the uh, fourth line, Municipal Council is again replaced with CAO. And Section 8A uh, states, uh, the section that is uh, proposed to be added to the policy, that in the event a fire department has refused registration, the decision of the CAO shall be reviewable by council upon 14 days notice from the fire department denied registration. Council may, subject to provi the provisions of section 294 of the act, accept or reject in whole or in part the application for registration. The uh, fourth um, <clears throat> recommended change is the change to the registration form. The old uh, policy and registration form that was attached to that policy begins at page 24. The old registration form is at page 26. And the new registration form is at page uh, 34. A comparison, a quick comparison of those forms, uh, you know, your worship. Uh, it's uh, obvious that the new uh, recommended form, uh, which came out of the uh, Fire Services Review Report, uh, is far more uh, extensive uh, than the old one-page form. Uh, the new form is four pages long, uh, details uh, the positions of the fire department's officer qualifications, uh, equipment, and uh, training of members. Uh, Appendix A to the form is uh, a definition uh, section that explains all of the terms in the registration uh, form. <clears throat> I'm happy to take any questions you want to. Uh, <clears throat> thank you. So the, uh, excuse me, the recommended motion is that council approve the recommended, mem recommended amendments to yes. the fire department registration policy number FS07-02. So I'd like to make that motion, please. Moved by Councilor Redmond, second by Councilor Gould. 
Uh, questions or comments for Mr. Cole? Say no. So Al, if I could, just one question. Um, so do I understand correctly, the only way that this is gonna to come to council in the future if this policy is adopted would be if a fire department was, was denied registration. And they uh, wish to appeal. Yes, but I mean, but council won't, in the past, they all came here, I guess. But in the future, they only come here to us if, if there's a refusal and they decide they want to appeal that. Exactly. Right. Thank you. Anyone else? Any other questions or seeing none? Call for the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Aren't you mind it nay? Most is carried. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Worship. 5.3 Advertising Promotions Policy. Mr. McCracken, Deputy CAO. Thank you, Worship. Throughout the year, the municipality receives requests from community organizations and businesses to advertise and promote uh, the municipality in various ways, including advertising in local papers, publications, and other uh, special times of year, such as Remembrance Day and, and Christmas holidays, uh, advertising at events, or most common seems to be sponsorship signage in a community hall or recreation uh, center. Uh, the municipality is committed to supporting the success of lo local organizations that provide services to its residents. <clears throat> and the objective of this policy is to provide a framework, a more formal framework for receiving requests for the distribution of funds for advertising and promotional initiatives that benefit the municipality. Creation of the policy provides staff parameters within which to make decisions. It's not much different than what we already do now, but it does uh, put, in, put it in policy and gives uh, staff direction. And there's uh, a recommended um, motion in your package. Thank you. So the, the, mo the recommended motion is the council approve the draft advertising and promotion of policy 21-03. If someone like to make that motion, please. Moved by Councillor Gilroy, second by Councillor Goodwin. Any questions or comments for Mr. McCracken? Seeing none, call for the question. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Aren't you mind it nay? Motion is carried. Thank you, sir. Um, under business issue 6.1, Citizen Representative on Poverty Reduction Advisory Committee, Mr. McCracken. Thank you, Worship. Uh, Ms. Pally has two uh, citizen representatives on the Poverty Reduction Advisory Committee, which um, is a committee that uh, is with, uh, I guess, a tripartite committee with the town of Oxford and the town of Amherst. Currently, one of our committee members, um, Allison Lair, her term um, appointment for, for last year has expired and she has expressed interest in another term appointment and council must now uh, affirm Ms. Blair's appointments uh, with a motion and the recommended motion is in your package as long uh, along with the terms of reference of the intermunicipal poverty reduction advisory committee thank you so the the motion is that council approve the reappointment of mr Allison Lair as one of the municipalities representatives on the poverty reduction advisory committee with the term being calendar year of 2023. If someone would like to make that motion, please. Moved by Councillor Revan, seconded by Councillor Gilroy. Any questions for Mr. McCracken? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Roger mind it nay. Motion is carried. Thank you. 6.2, Pugwash Library and your request. Council Hoteling is her issue. I think Mr. Harris is going to speak to that on her behalf. I will, Your Worship. Thank you very much. Uh, the information is a package, sorry, page 49 of Council's information package. There's a memo there from uh, Council Hoteling, and it's based upon a presentation made um, by folks from the uh, Pugwash Open Air Gallery. They made a presentation to Council a few weeks ago. Um, and there are uh, a couple of the three examples, actually, of, of artwork and placement in the package as well uh, that's referred to in the memo. So the memo is a, that essentially states the presentation was, was made by the members of the gallery provided to council on the 29th a few weeks ago. Three options were presented to council regarding the placement of the artwork. Option one, uh, which is in the package, was to have the artwork displayed in the rear of the building facing the harbor, essentially around the, the deck area. Uh, uh, option two is on the external, external wall facing Durham Street. And option three was placement of the artwork on the side of the building facing the Sunrise Trail. And as I noted, the uh, options are there in the uh, council package. So Shelley, maybe if you could show us option one there. Thank you. Uh, the, the motion that Council Hotelling uh, suggested was that council approve option one for the installation of the artwork in the Pugwash Library, Worship. Thank you. 
Um, the motion is that, uh, back to that the council approve option one for the installation of artwork on the Pugwash Library. If someone would like to make that motion, move by Councilor Redmond, second by Councilor Gould. Any questions or comments? Seeing them, call the question. All in favor say aye. Aye. Mark your mind at nay. Works as carry. Thank you. Uh, 6.3 retroactive RCP cost. Um, so in your in your package, there's uh, some information from the Federation of Canadian Municipalities in regards to the disappointment they're sharing across this country with the fact that the federal government's decided not to absorb retroactive costs, which are associated with the RCP cost and pay increases over the last number of years, and, and in fact, pass those on down to the municipalities. Um, there is a, in your package, you'll find a resolution that the Federation is asking for municipal councils to, to, uh, to adopt and uh, recommend the motion will be that council forward correspondence and the resolution from F FCM to our local member of parliament regarding the downloading of RCMP retroactive pay to municipalities. Someone like to make that motion, please? Moved by Deputy Mayor Joseph, seconded by Councilor McCormick. Any questions or comments in that regard? Councilor Redmond. To the uh, person in charge versus uh, or copied to the uh, Minister of Justice. So, so I, so I think what's happening is I think FCM is probably taking these all these resolutions that we're passing and they're probably collectively putting them together and, and forwarding them on to the Department of Justice. Yeah, I believe that's the case. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? See none. Call for the question. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Mark your mind at nay. Motion is carried. Thank you. 6.4 Southampton Community Center request for assistance. Christie Foundation application, Mr. McCracken. Thank you, Your Worship. <clears throat> so the municipality received correspondence from the Southampton Community Center, including correspondence from the Christie Community Foundation requesting that the municipality be the intermediary for donation of up to $20,000 to the community center from the foundation. Because the foundation cannot donate and receive a charitable donation receipt from the community center, they are requesting municipality accept the funds, provide a charitable receipt, and disperse the <clears throat> funds to the community center on their behalf. Um, project being funded is the development of a playground with accessibility features, and municipalities accepted donations of this nature in the past and has provided receipts to the donor and dispersed the funds to the request of recipient. Recipients. Disbursement is contingent on approval by council and is for an expenditure which the municipality has the authority to spend. And there's a recommended motion as well as some uh, grants, uh, yeah, grant application to the uh, foundation and uh, correspondence in your package. Thank you. So the recommended motion is that the request by the Southampton Community Center for the municipality to receive up to $20,000 from the Christie F Community Fund Foundation. Mm -hmm and disperse the funds to the community center to assist with the cost of developing a playground be approved. So I'd like to make that motion, moved by Councilor Porter, second by Councilor uh, Goodwin. Uh, I was thinking about the question I was gonna ask. Any questions for Mr. McCracken? So I'd have one question, it'd be, it'd be the same for the next item, same item as well. How do, how do we communicate, if these pass, how do we communicate yeah. that with, I'm thinking about the Christie Foundation itself. Yeah, the, way the, the, the clerk's office um, makes uh, contact Great. with both the applicant and the uh, and the uh, foundation. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Call for the question. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Mind and nay. Motion is carried. Thank you. Uh, Six point five funding wins application to the Christie Foundation, Mr. McCracken. Uh, similar requests. Um, <clears throat> so I won't go into a lot of the uh, background discussion, but the. Um, Similar request from the uh, Fundy Winds Marsh, and they're um, doing some improvements to their site uh, there, and they're looking for the municipality to receive up to $7,400 from the foundation, which we would then provide to um, the Fundy Winds Marsh on their behalf and issue the foundation a charitable tax receipt. There's a motion and some correspondence and uh, application information in your package. Excuse me. Thank you. So the recommended motion is that council approve the request by the Funding Winds Mar Society for the municipality to receive up to seventy-four hundred dollars from the Christie Community Foundation and disperse the funds to the society to assist with the cost of site improvements. Someone like to make that motion, please. Moved by Deputy Mayor Joseph, seconded by Councilor McCormick. <laughs> Any questions or comments for Mr. McGregor? All with the question. All those in favor, say aye. 
Aye. Contrary mind and nay. Motion is carried. Thank you. 6.6 .6, Sunset Community Board Ratification of Citizens Appointees. Mr. McCracken. <laughs> you almost got away. Uh, right. As they say in golf, your worship, Peter, you're up again. <laughs> <clears throat> you must have just stay there. Thank you, your worship. Um, <clears throat> so we've uh, received that um, two names put forward by Sunset and to ratify for as board members. Um, uh, Corresponds specifically from uh, Julie Ho, Hoik, CEO of the Sunset Community, requesting the council ratify the appointments of Mr. Alan Webb and Mr. Robert Barnes. Both gentlemen would have a term ending May 1st, 2026. Ratification of the Sunset Community Board members happens on a semi regular basis and is required through the Sunset Community Articles of Incorporation and Bylaws. And there's a recommended motion in your packet. Thank you, sir. So recommended motion is that council ratify the following two appointments and terms to the Sunset Community Board, Mr. Alan Webb, new term ending May 1st, 2026. Mr. Robert Barnes, new term ending May 1st, 2026. 2026. Moved by Councilor Redmond, seconded by Councilor Gilroy. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, call for question. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Trying to mind it nay. Most is carried. Thank you. Your Worship, you're, I wonder- You're dismissed. <laughs> I, I wonder if we could get some feedback on that, Mike. I wonder if maybe we could just bend it down. I think last time, you, yeah, bent it down. Yeah, thank you. Try that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 6.7, amendment to the Fire Service Review Committee's terms of reference. Mr. Cole, Director of Protective Services. Thank you, Your Worship. <clears throat> this is a recommended motion to amend the Fire Service Review Committee terms of reference that were approved at the February 22, 2023 council meeting to replace and it's to replace the named fire hub, one of the named fire hubs, as a as set forth in the terms of reference. Uh, at a meeting of uh, the fire Serve, the fire review committee, the four fire chiefs who are members of the committee all requested uh, that one of the hubs be replaced with an alternate. Uh, due to the way in which the terms of reference were originally drafted. Uh, alternating uh, a hub requires an amendment to the terms of reference. So the <clears throat> old terms of reference and the proposed new ter amended terms of reference are at pages 82 and 83, respectively, of the uh, council package. And uh, you worship, you'll note that uh, the difference is the uh, members or the uh, fire departments that uh, make up the hubs are not individually named. They're simply identified uh, as hubs one through four. That's right. Thank, thank you. So, recommended motion is that council amend the Fire Service Review Committee terms of reference approved at the February 2022 2023 council meeting to replace the named fire department hubs as set forth in amended terms of reference. Moved by Dep Deputy Mayor Joseph. Seconded by Councilor Gilroy. Any questions or comments for any questions or comments for uh, Mr. Cole? None. Call with the question. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Aren't you mind it nay? Motion is carried. Thank you. <clears throat> that brings us down to number seven information items. Uh, we have, well, we have two because Councilor Hotel is not here. So 7.1 Council recognition. Uh, Councilor Gilroy, first place. Thank you, Worship. I'd like to uh, recognize Austin Dare of Linden, who was recently awarded with the Safety Excellence Award for Trucking Owners and Operators for the province for the year 2022 by the Nova Scotia Trucking Safety Association. Congratulations, Austin. Thank you. Thank you for that. Great guy. Uh, yep. Councilor Redmond. You want me to do mine now? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm... Mind, is it? Good. I'd like to recognize the volunteers at the Wallace Fireplace Thrift Shop and the Wallace Volunteer Fire Department. The thrift shop is open three days a week, 
with new to you clothing and miscellaneous miscellaneous items. They also hold a weekly online auction in support of the Wallace Fire Department. Because of this, they were able to purchase a drone for the department. These average in the range of $20,000. On April 20th, the fire department received a call for assistance in finding a 78-year-old man back in the woods in Malagash. 30 minutes later, the help of, with the help of the drone, they were able to locate the man 1.6 kilometers back in the woods. <clears throat> so as Chief Tom Flynn said, it paid for itself in the first official use. It is because of these volunteers that this individual was brought home safe and sound. It is reassuring that this is available to us all. A big thank you to all involved, to the ladies and gentlemen that helped run and organize the Wallace Fireplace Thrift Shop and to our volunteer firefighters that have taken of their time to learn how to operate the drone. These individuals are always there for their community. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's great. Thank you very much, Councilor Ribbon. Um, 7.1.3, Councilor McCormick. Thank you, Your Worship. I'd like to recognize Paul Williams, Executive Director of GOVRC Workshop and the Spring Hill Fire Department for their quick action on extinguishing the fire at the workshop in the early morning on April the 20th. Paul received a call from the alarm company and quickly responded to the building. When he arrived, he noticed smoke coming from the building. He then proceeded to use the fire extinguisher to contain the fire until the Spring Hill Fire Department arrived, which was shortly after. Their quick response sure saved the building. Smoke's damage is the, is, the worst, is the worst part. The whole building has been cleaned and treated, but the fire damage is going to take much longer to repair. I was out there today and GRVRC is now opened. Uh, the contact department is, and hopefully the clients will be getting back into the workshop tomorrow. I can't imagine the impact on the community and the clients if it wasn't for Paul and the fire department, and I wish to express my gratitude to both of them. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Council McCormick. And, you know, fire departments are mentioned a lot, uh, individuals are mentioned a lot in these times, and uh, we owe a lot to the, to our uh, to our volunteers throughout the whole, whole community, as we talked about the past week. Um, folks, that brings us to the end of the agenda. I'd ask for a motion to adjourn, please. Moved by Councillor Gould, 